This is how I made the patches that I've been showing in these past few posts. I used fabric, embroidery hoop, a needle, some thread, tape, and scissors, and of course my designs. So first cut the fabric down to a reasonable size. You want it to be bigger than your hoop, but not so big that it starts getting in the way. And then insert that into your hoop and tighten it and pull it taut so that it's uh, easy to embroider. Then cut out your design and tape it onto the back of the fabric so that you can trace it onto the front and have that as a guide. I decided to make these designs in a graphics or a vector based software uh, affinity designer. My Adobe license I don't have anymore because I'm not a student anymore. But I wanted to make the designs on a graphic software so that I would have a more precise design, especially because I wanted these to be all the same size and relatively symmetric and actually a circle. And then I start and go in with the first base color. I like to start on the top. And for this one, I'm starting with that blue color. For most of the fill stitching, I'm using a long and short stitch. I picked this stitch because I wanted it to not really have a specific pattern. I wanted it to look relatively smooth and not have the stitches line up in any kind of way. So I used a stitch of variable lengths next to each other and went from there. And then I go back in with the white and do the same thing on the bottom. I also try to be careful to sew in sort of those loose ends that are created when I start a new color or start a new thread of any kind. Then once the bottom half is done in the white, the next section that is also white is that middle area. So for the ring, I go around with a modified back stitch so that it has that shape of a ring and you know delineates it from the other areas of the patch. And then finally that very middle section of the Pokeball button is also white and I fill that in with a pretty simple satin stitch because it's such a small fill area that it can just be a fully stitched across with a series of horizontal stitches. And then once that's all done, I tie it off and weave the needle through some of the stitches on the back so that that is all secure and it won't fray. Alright, and now for the black detailing. So since it's a netball, it's got those um, black stripes on it. The stripes, um, the way that I wanted to handle those, I wanted them to be a little bit raised. So I did one long stitch across each of the lines and then went over those stitches with set stitches. And there's also some black outlines 
around that middle section and some lines separating the top and the bottom. And then the last section of detailing left to do is that very middle outline near the bottom uh, between the button and that ring. That one is pretty thin though, so what I've done is separated out two strands of the six-strand embroidery floss and used that to stitch that middle section. And that's all the design embroidery done. So it can be taken out of the hoop now. And the outline will be handled sort of in the finishing steps. Next I cut out the patch and I take some of the excess fabric and cut another layer. What I'm going to be using this for is both for reinforcing the, fa uh, the patch itself and for preventing edge fraying. So once I have those cut out, I stitch them right sides together using that same thin embroidery floss of the two strands instead of the six because I don't need this to be super strong. It mostly needs to hold until I can get in more stitches. And so I'm getting to the end of that and I want to leave a gap open so that I can flip it right sides out again. But before doing that, I'm going to trim off some of the excess fabric around the edge. And then we get to flip. It looks a little lumpy and lopsided at first, so it definitely takes some nudging to get it into the actual shape that I want. I take the needle to pull some of the stitches and tug them until it sits in the correct shape. And then I take that thin two strands again and do a quick back stitch just around the main design embroidery. So what that does is it both both holds that gap closed and gives a reference point for the outline edging of where to put those stitches. And so for that outline edging, I'm going back to the thick black thread, the full six strands, And I'm doing a kind of modified whip stitch. So it is a whip stitch in that I'm coming up through and over the edge of the fabric, uh, but instead of the way a normal whip stitch looks, which has some separation between each of the stitches, this one I'm really intentionally trying to stitch right next to the previous stitches so that I get a nice solid thick outline. I also vary um, some of the tightness of it based on how much extra fabric is sitting around. So as you can see, the um, the fabric around the edge is not exactly even in most places. So in the places where there's a little bit too much, I try to pull a little tighter to get it into the shape that I want. And some of the places where there's a little bit less, I let the thread be a little looser to try and even out that outline. And since I don't have a thimble, uh, when I have a hard time pushing the needle through the layers of fabric and stitching and what all is going on in there, I have been using my mouse pad uh, to protect the desk, protect my fingers some, 
I'm going to get that needle through the fabric. And then once that's done, just a little more nudging. And I tie it off. And now since we have the multiple layers of fabric, I can take that end of that thread and weave it through those two layers to leave a little bit of an end but hide it inside the patch itself. And that's how it's done.